up people of YouTube and welcome to my channel it's your boy David Nemo Harrison and today we are doing a little bit of a reaction video I understand it's not gameplay related it's not gameplay gameplay actual gameplay but it's game gaming related so it counts so today we are reacting to the top 10 video game fails of all time and I'm curious to see what we will find out today um, there's a lot of uh, I got a few off the top of my head uh, video game fellows that I think should be on this list, but I don't know. Let's see uh, what the video has. Video games, as much as we love them, are certainly not infallible. Like any form of entertainment or, well, anything at all, they are at the mercy of error. So today we're going to be counting down 10 fails in the video game industry, some that are truly ridiculous, sometimes funny mishaps, just promise not to laugh. Announced first for release in 1998, development of this game began the year prior in 1997. Thanks to many, many delays and roadblocks, not even Duke himself could blow to pieces 14 years later when the final version of this game would finally... Never played Duke Nukem. Never played Duke Nukem, so... I know nothing about this. Heard it was a pretty good game, but... I never played Duke Nukem, so... See the light of shells only to be promptly get lambasted with mediocre scores by just about every major gaming site and critic. A woefully far cry from the rapturous success of the originals which became smash hits in the gaming world and seamlessly transitioned from a 2D shooter to a first person shooter, Duke Nukem Forever was censored for having clunky controls and being outdated in general. In fairness, it was intended for a generation of gamers a decade prior Duke Nukem went down as a cigar-smoking, alien-blasting, stripper-ogling joke at best, and a really, really bad game at the least. Wait, what? It went down for what? Stripper-ogling joke at best, and... No, back that up again. It was intended for a generation of gamers a decade prior. Duke Nukem went down as a cigar-smoking, alien-blasting, stripper-ogling joke at best, and... I mean, that sounds like GTA and, uh, you know, cigarette-smoking, guns a-blazing, strippers. Sounds like a GTA, if you ask me. Well, once again, I had never played this game, so... Eh. A really, really bad game at the worst. It is really unfortunate that this series did not capitalize on the success and popularity of uh, 14-ish years ago. What do you do when you decide to enter the handheld arms race against Nintendo? What is that? First, you check your temperature because clearly you are unwell. Hold up, hold up, wait, wait. Before this guy even says anything else, that literally looks like a thing, a little, the little handout Sega toys you used to get, get from McDonald's back in the day. Like, literally, look at this. Tell me, hold up. Boom. Now tell me that doesn't look like any of this. Like, really. It looks like something I could get out of an old school McDonald's bag. As a kid's meal. A kid's meal. It looks like if a child made it. Anyways, should you choose to ignore your fever, for the love of Mario, don't do. Now why has it got numbers on the side? And what, what, what were they going for? A phone game. What Nokia did and released the N gauge. Due to also being a phone, the pricing of this system was roughly three. They were going for a phone. And made dog crap. You were going for a phone and you made dog crap. The, um, what's it called? Uh, the, the sidekick. 
was a lot better than this. And I could do a lot more with Psychic. And all he had was just a little swirl thing to go, to scroll up and down. And all you could do was text on it. And it looked better than this. Three times the price of their established competition. And it's no wonder the end gauge sank faster than the Christmas bonuses of the executives responsible for it. Throw in a shamefully advertising campaign wherein they first announced this price point painted across the belly of a scantily clad female and you have some serious nightmare feel for any businessman. The Nintendo 64 was the last major console to use cartridges instead of CDs, and there is a damn good reason for that. Cartridges are more expensive to produce and hold exponentially less data than they're considerably less. Yeah, that when they used to, like when it when you had, you got basically you got dust in your cartridge, you were done. Cause you had to pull it out, blow in that drum, and it used to be the sound like this on this. Like, <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean to do that on the mic. But yeah, you had to blow in a hard as mess. And stuff that you didn't even get, stuff that you didn't even get all the dust out. So you had to even blow even harder. And, uh, and that's what it is. You, at the, by, the end time, by the time you try to get the, all the dust out, you're lightheaded and you don't even feel like playing a game no more. Can't even tell you how many times I have to do that. Clunky and cumbersome disc counterparts. With technology advancing at the time, Nintendo made the strange decision to stick with cartridges. One could even argue it was this very decision that gave their competitor Sony, who had themselves opted to embrace CDs, the heads up on Nintendo necessary to cement themselves as a serious competitor for the foreseeable future. Due to their decision to use N64 cartridges instead of CDs, Nintendo lost some third-party support including the Final Fantasy series. This definitely helped Sony pave the way to be a clear winner with the PlayStation 2. When competition heats up in the gaming world, sometimes you need to do something drastic. As the hot lights of E3 bear down on you and thousands of attending gamers fix- What is this guy doing? What is his dance? As the hot lights of E3 bear down on you and thousands of attending gamers fix their gaze on you, you may take drastic a little too far. As was the case in 1995 when Sega, with Sony breathing down their necks, announced the release and date of their new console, the Sega Saturn. It was now. No, really, they announced, much to the surprise of, well, everyone, it was already out. Not only was it already out, but a few major retailers apparently weren't clued into that. Walmart amongst the giants who didn't even have it on their shelves. Couple that with a price tag $100 greater than their competition, and you have a surefire recipe for disaster. One of the most well-known and feared things in all of gaming, having provoked the anger of more- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to laugh. I have to laugh. I grew up as a PlayStation kid. I'm still am a PlayStation guy. Uh, for all you X about the ring of death. Oh. Oh. Oh, man. And y'all talked all that smacked about PlayStation. I'll tell you what. PlayStation at most, you just got the red screen of death. But that rarely happens. But the ring of death for the Xbox can happen at any point. And then once you get the red ring of death, that's game over. You have to get a new system. I know this personally because my cousins used to have Xbox and they used to clown me for having a PlayStation. But I never got the red ring of death. I never had to worry about the red ring of death because I had a PlayStation that actually worked. For gamers then teabagging and repeated deaths combined, the infamous, the feared, the dreaded Red Ring of Death. Though the 360 housed its fair share of classics for the duration of its shelf life, many of those classics were cut short for gamers as the familiar green ring that surrounded the power button turned a chilling red, signaling their console's transformation to a cutting edge home gaming device to a glorified doorstop. 
The ruthless business of the video game world can sometimes put to shame the phrase dog eat dog. Nintendo are no strangers to this. In the early 90s, Sony and Nintendo entered a partnership in the race for CD-based gaming over the usual cartridge format. Sony were aiding Nintendo in creating a CD add-on for the SNES. It didn't go down well with Sony when Nintendo shockingly unveiled that they were in partnership with Sony's direct rivals in almost every facet of business, Philips, leaving Sony very red in the face and thirsty for revenge. It was this decision that propelled Sony to adapt their work with Nintendo into their own console, the PlayStation. That's right, Nintendo's surprise double-crossing of Sony gave a super villainesque rise to competition they never saw coming. The cherry on the cake of Sony's vengeance, they didn't even rename this new console. The original project was called Nintendo PlayStation. The cheeky upstarts in the gaming arms race simply deleted the space between two of those words and became giants in the industry as a slap in the face to Nintendo. That takes some balls. Hold on, hold on, time to up. What number is this? The business of the video game world can sometimes... So, let me get this straight. Uh, I'm sure you're trying to figure this out how this is a... This is number five on a top ten list of video game fails. I'm just saying from a business point perspective, because uh, I did graduate with my business degree, but the the Nintendo versus Sony rivalry actually had actually ended up helping out the gaming community because you all they did was create more competition and they kept working on to outdo each other. So how is this a video game fail? That's my question. And why is he even number five? Why is he even on this list? Please, somebody in the comments, let me know. Like, maybe I'm feeling too much into it. But in my opinion, this shouldn't even be on this list. Nowhere. The slap in the face to Nintendo. That takes some balls. Good job, PlayStation. <laughs> Since its horrific failure, the Virtual Boy has cemented itself in gaming history as one, if not Nintendo's greatest commercial failures. But its negative influence expands far beyond some bad sales. Other than those sales, of which Nintendo made less than half their projections. What is this trailer? This monochromatic monstrosity was universally panned for many reasons, such as being discomforting to the user, an unfortunate side effect of wearing a pair of heavy set binoculars to play video games. Most sadly though was the fact that this piece of kit actually got its creator Gunpei Yakoi, a legendary figure within Nintendo responsible for the truly classic franchise that helped them gain early momentum, Game & Watch, fired from the company. For six days, players were left completely in the dark as to what was happening and unable yes. to access their online service. Yes. And what happened after those six days? They learned that they had personal information such as credit card details stolen. The PSN outage of 2011. And fun fact, this actually, when this kit went down, almost killed all, play, all Sony. Like, the PSN network was shut down for month, I believe a couple months before they got the problem under control, but this single handedly literally almost took down PlayStation for good. Like, almost. Evan saw Sony doing their best to scrape back some credibility after one of the world's most widely used and followed online services was made a mockery of by some hackers from the internet that left them fearing for their bank accounts and their potential identity thievery. But hey, this catastrophic news making blunder is cool, right? They gave us a download code for Little Big Planet. With the monumental thievery. But hey, this catastrophic news making blunder is cool, right? They gave us a download code for Little Big Planet. I never got that code. I never got that code. No doubt I ever played Little Big Planet like that because that game was trash. But I never got that code. Uh, I feel some type of way now. 
with the monumental failure of the E.T. video game, president of Warner Brothers, e. Manny Gerard, oh, learned a very important lesson. Don't allow your reach to exceed your grasp. Yearning to secure Spielberg as a producer for their studios, Gerard promised him a game to the tune of one of his iconic movies, E.T. Except he wanted it so much that he wildly overpaid Spielberg, allowing him to net $25 million dollars plus royalties and massively overproduced $25 million dollars? $25? Plus royalties? Were you high? The game. Yeah, hold on, Steven Spielberg made a like a bam. game. This event led to the infamous burial of countless of E.T. cartridges, one that Gerard has no doubt had shoved in his face a few times since. The crash of 1983 was the unprecedented event which saw the total revenues of video game sales drop from a staggering $3.2 billion dollars all the way down to 100 million in the span of two years. But what caused this almost absurd loss in such a short amount of time? Many factors, from surprise competition emerging in the form of home computers to the high profile failure of the Atari 2600's rendition of Pac-Man and the infamous E.T. video game rocking the industry and even something as simple as the market experiencing a heavy influx of too high a magnitude of consoles flooding consumers with worthless choices. Proving the old age too many cooks in the kitchen right, all these causes and more swirled into a vortex of confusion that saw the industry buckle under the pressure and falter in a way it thankfully never has since. While we think back of the video game industry, there's definitely going to be some fails along the way, but these were some of our most notable and memorable- That's just poor forecasting business-wise, but yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys really liked the video. Please leave in the comment um, if you want to keep seeing content like this. I understand it was more of a reaction video, but it has a lot of gaming elements, so... I want to stick today with the game, with the gaming, let it be reactions like this, as well as doing actual gameplays and highlights. But let me know if you want to keep seeing videos like this again. I got, um, in my next video, my next reaction video, I'm doing, I believe, the top 20 overhyped video games of all time that end up flopping. Tune into that. Don't forget to also leave a like on this video. Let's try to get at least 10 likes on the video. Hit the subscribe button. Destroy that bell icon to get notified every time I upload a video. And as well as leave a comment of if you want to, if you want to keep seeing content like this, or you want me to just stick to the gameplay. And just let me know your overall thoughts and stuff I can improve on. All the all the comments matter. But anyways, it's been real people YouTube. It's your boy David Nemo. Every morning. Sign up to next time. Peace.